All right, welcome back to the Com channel. We're going to be reviewing just a very basic assault phase. When I say very basic, you'll note that there's no intervening terrain, there's no independent characters, there's not multiple squads. We're talking about the most basic assault phase. Now this, I've been getting quite a few PMs regarding the request for this. Um, so we're going to start here, and in later videos we'll make them more complicated so you can kind of see how other things resolve themselves. Uh, everything that we're reviewing in the rulebook starts on page 33, so if you have any questions as you are watching this video, you can always reference your rulebook. Okay, so the assault phase. We're going to make the assumption that um, the, the darker marines had already fired at the lighter marines. One thing to remember, you can only assault the unit that you fired at. So for instance, if this group had fired at some other unit and took them off the table, they could not turn around and assault these guys on the same round. Um, everything that the guys are firing in here are either pistols, so pistol, 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 or they had a melted gun, which is an assault weapon, so that they can charge. The rule is basically that if, as long as your unit did not fire a rapid fire or a heavy weapon, they can assault. Unless they're relentless. If they're relentless, it doesn't matter what weapon they fired, they can still assault that same phase. And check your codex to see what units are and are not relentless. So, these guys fired, they took out quite a few of the white armored marines, and now they're about to assault because they're in that 6 inch range, and if you have a unit in your codex that allows for a 12 inch assault, it could be up to 12 inches. Um, but most in most scenarios, you're going to have a six-inch six assault area. So they're within six inches, and this is how you actually resolve how they should pile in. Okay. So the first thing is that the attackers move into assault. You take the model that's closest to the enemy, which in this case is this guy, and you move them into base-base contact. Then you take the rest of your units and one by one move them up six inches so that they are in as unique base-base as you can make them or they're within two inches of a base base model so they can be in the assault. So, this guy moves up, this guy moves up. Now that there are no remaining models on the other side, you just kind of move the rest of the guys up. And again, you're moving them six inches. I know for a fact that the distance that we had laid out at the greatest amount was four and a half inches, so that's why I just freely move them. The next phase is that the defenders react. Had there been more models behind, they would have been able to move six inches into combat. If the models are already in base-to-base -base contact, they cannot be moved six inches away to try to avoid being in contact with the models that they're in combat with. The notion of defenders react is not to reduce the number of models in close combat, but to try to get everyone into close combat at once. And the new 5th edition rules the notion of close combat is to have one side completely decimate the other, if at all possible, in an individual turn so that you can move through your entire game a little bit faster. Okay, so the, since they're generic space marines for each one, they are going to have the same initiative, with the exception of the guy with the power fist. People with power fists have, always have an initiative of one. I'm going to pull the space marines aside from one another, and we're going to count out exactly how many hits each side's going to have. Realize they were in base-to-base -base contact, but this is a tutorial, so I'm trying to make it as clean to understand as possible. Now, you start at the highest initiative order, and you go to the lowest. So in this example, this line represents who's in initiative four. All, all seven of these Marines are at initiative four. This guy back here is at initiative one. So he will be fighting at a different initiative. So let's count how many dice will the assaulting group get. First off, each Space Marine starts off with an attack of one. These three have two close combat weapons. So now it's two for attacks for these three and one attack for this guy but they also initiated the assault, which means they add a plus one. So now we have three, six, nine, and you add two for this guy. One for his base attack and one for being on the assault. So that's 11 dice to roll to hit. 
These guys as defenders, since they don't have two close combat weapons, are simply going to get one apiece as their base stat explains. So, 11 hits, 3 hits. Let's go ahead and resolve that combat. I'm going to roll one side at a time, but since they all are at the same initiative, even if this side completely decimates this group, they will still have a chance to fight back. Now, what do I have to roll in order for these guys to hit these guys? They both have weapon skill of 4, so if you look at the to hit in the assault phase chart, you'll note that I need 4s from these 11 dice to hit these guys. So let's take a look at how many hits. Pretty good rolling. Out of the 11 dice, 7 are hits. Now we have to determine how many of those hits become wounds. The strength of each one of these guys is 4. The toughness of each one of the defenders is 4. And again, you'll notice in the two wound chart uh, that if the strength is 4 and the toughness is 4, that I require 4 in order to cause these hits to become wounds against the defending models. Pulling out the misses, we see that there are two wounds. Okay, So I've rolled to hit, I've rolled to wound, none of these guys have power weapons, so the defending space marines get to utilize their power armor as saves. So the defenders take these two dice, and as long as they roll three or higher, they basically ignore the wound. We rolled a one and a four, that means one of the guys will be taken out of combat at the end of this initiative. But these three guys get to attack back. So they're going to take their three dice, and they're going to roll to hit. Again, weapon skill four versus weapon skill four means that I re the defenders need a four to hit the attackers. And they roll a four, five, and six. They're rolling outstanding. Now we have to determine if the defenders wound the attackers. Again, their strength is four against the toughness four of the attackers. So they require fours from the hits in order to cause wounds. And they roll a 1, 3, and 6, which means you take two of the dice off, and the 1, 6, which was a hit, now is a wound, but a savable wound, because again, these guys do not have power weapons, so the attackers can use their power armor. They roll a 5, which means they, the armor saves the person from actually being hurt by that wound. Okay, so initiative four is done. You remove the, the guy. You now start rolling down the rest of the initiatives. Three, two, one. And we're now at the power fist guy.